All right, Dr. Kate, welcome back to the podcast and in person again. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here again. And three years later. Can you believe it? Three years later. No. It felt like it was recently. That was before all the COVID craziness. Because too. we were probably in quarantine for two of those years. That's right? true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you were in the same building last time. I'm just in a new unit. So Keto Camp HQ. It was actually episode 100. That was the last episode, 100. Now we're, I told you, getting closer to 600. And we're going to deep dive into such an important topic, not just about breast implant illness or how to explant and all that information you're going to share, but your backstory on heavy metal poisoning. So let's talk about your backstory and what transpired with mercury. Yeah, so anything related to pre-existing conditions prior to breast implants is an important topic, right? So for some people like me, it's gonna be heavy metals. It could be some sort of chronicity, like some sort of low-grade chronic infection. Um, anything that deranges deranges histamine and creates collagen dysregulation can be a pre-existing thing. So in the case of mercury, yes, that's my story. <laughs> That's one of the components of my story. Do you want me to just, where should I, I don't know, where, what started in utero? Do you want me to start in yeah, utero? Yeah, well, like what were some of the things that you started to notice in terms of your symptoms? And then how did you pinpoint it to, it's a mercury issue? Well, I had no idea. I didn't know what amalgam illness was until I, I was already a doctor. I was already television hosting. I brought Dr. Pompa on the show, who I'm sure you're your listeners are super familiar with yeah, his work. And this, it's a story that he tells a lot and I like to tell it too because it was a really big piece of the puzzle in my health. So I knew that I had breast implant illness. I'd already removed my implants. I was starting to have a little bit of progress in my health, but not really, you know, on the outside, it looked like I was doing better because I think when women explant that are sick, they typically see some aesthetic changes right away. Like they see changes in their eyes and skin and if they're having swelling and weird things, sometimes those immediately resolve. And how old were you at this time? Oh gosh, um, early twenties. No, I no, I no, I was probably in my early thirties. Early thirties. Because okay. now, where are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in your early thirties. Yeah. You explanted. Yeah. And then you started noticing more symptoms. I well, you know, there was a honeymoon period, and we see this with amalgam removal too. That yeah. there's sometimes a honeymoon period of like symptoms sort of resolving for a little while, and then kind of coming back sometimes worse. So yeah, it, it's to be honest, at this point, a little bit hard to remember because after explant, I went into such a dark hole. Like it was like I remember months and months of just being in bed, sleeping for almost the whole day. And I just, you know, it was because very, you were tired, you were depressed. Both. I was extremely toxic and extremely ill and had like no immune function and, oh, wow. and had just gone through like a tremendous extreme stress period of like explanting, graduating from chiropractic school, like taking four parts of boards, like almost dying. Um, you know, so yeah, your body <laughs> it was, was a push. fight or flight. So <laughs> it was, it, it, yeah, it was something like that. But anyway, anyway, so we got through it and and so, you know, I was television hosting. I was still sort of searching for answers. I think that that television show was born out of the desire to bring experts in and learn more and more because I knew that there was still a lot more to learn. Like it was not over. So Dr. Pompa came on the show and he's telling his story in front of me, like how you and I are now. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I had this high volume chiropractic practice and... And I was really energetic. And then I went to the dentist a couple of times and I did a couple amalgam removals with an allopathic dentist who didn't use the precautions for mercury. Mm -hmm. And he immediately had the onset of chronic fatigue syndrome and had no idea why. So he's talking about it. And, I, and, and that was what led him to study functional medicine. And he's talking about it in front of me. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I had two amalgams break in my mouth right before I got breast implants. Oh, my gosh. So they happened kind of consecutively. But if you really want to know the whole story, which I, th I think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my I was adopted, but my biological mother has, I don't know, maybe eight or nine silver fillings. She also has a seizure disorder. I know this about her. It's related for sure. She also has an atypical seizure disorder now that they can't even call epilepsy, but it performs like epilepsy. So it's basically treated the same. But in my opinion, that's a mercury issue, right? Because we know mercury is a central nervous system agonist and it can yeah. affect people differently genetically. But anyway, so yeah, like a lot of mercury passes in utero through the placenta. Um, it, it's, I'm not really sure why. It might be a defense me or like a survival mechanism of humans, but it does pass. And in my, in my, 
research, I've seen a lot of patterns and trends in babies that are born to mothers with mercury. And there's interesting things like we do see a lot of like high functioning IQ in those types of babies, which is cool, but it also tends to go with a little bit of hypervigilant personality and a little bit of like primed kind of nervous, sympathetic nervous system tone. I myself had a very severe tongue tie and I've seen tongue tie as well. So when you think about the way the the neck leans forward and the way the, ner- the, the sympathetic chain, which is right in the back of the neck, gets kind of taut in a tongue tie situation. It gets pulled a little bit and you have that kind of primed, ready, like fight or flight type of personality. I mean, that can happen posturally, right? But I see this in babies, see this in babies that are born from mothers with high mercury. Interesting. It, it's interesting, right? Well, we know MTHFR is yeah. related um, to tongue tie, you know, so anyhow, yeah, started there and then breastfed and then I got a couple, when I was a child, we went, you know, there was a dentist and he put a whole bunch of fillings in my mouth and there, there was, this guy ended up, he actually went to prison for fraud. Uh, He was, he was doing all these amalgams on the children that came with a certain type of insurance, like free health insurance in Florida. And Mm -hmm. yeah, he ended up going to jail for, for medical fraud or that's the California one. I forget the Florida one, what it's called. Was he here in Miami? By no, the way? he was up in, in North Florida. Okay. In Gainesville. Wow. So how many fillings did he put in your mouth? So what happened was it was, I think I was eight. And what happened was when I, we left the dental office, they told my mother that I had, they, I was scheduled to have five or six more. And she said, what? And they had put a bunch in that day. And, oh my and then she said, no, I'm going to take her to a different dentist and get a second opinion. And then we went to a new dentist and they said, oh, she doesn't have any cavities. So they didn't even know why he was right. Right. That's probably why he's in jail or why well, he, he went did to jail. go to jail. And then he ended up, he's passed away, deceased. He was hit by a car in oh. 1999 driving off. This guy cha- completely changed my, the course of my entire life. Oh, I mean, these, this is, <laughs> I think about this stuff yeah. because that tooth led to a lot of trauma. I'm not going to get into it, but it was that one tooth that led to a root canal. The one that broke the amalgam, it led to a root canal, which led to like me being misdiagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia and then MS. And then eventually oh it was really just a root canal, but that all happened right. <laughs> wow. So he, he was kind of like the, the starting point for all of that. Yes. Okay. So yes. let's, you, your mom had mercury. Well, your mom had fillings and that's mm-hmm. passed on through utero. So mm-hmm. for those who don't know, if you've never had silver fillings, great. But if your mom had them, mm-hmm. that's passed on. And I think it's as well like a survival mechanism. And lead as well because we know bone, there's bone that transfers to baby. So there's that study, the DRASH study that showed same amount of mercury in mom's mouth in the form of fillings proportional to the amount of mercury in the baby's brain when they perform these autopsies, right? Right. And then we're also, there's different factors. Like if the mother, certain hot liquids, maybe she's drinking more of that can mobilize more. So there's different rates of mobilization. That's case by case. So. Yeah. And then in, uh, you said you were breastfed and that's another way to get Absolutely. mercury and other metals as well. Absolutely. Yes. And then this dentist loads you up. <laughs> um, so your bucket is just like overflowing and overflowing. So as Dr. Pompa is explaining his story, are you just going back and like revisiting your, your story? And you're like, oh my, all these connections are not being made. Yes. It took time to put all the pieces together, but that was a really big piece for me. And so at that time I had a lot of mercury symptoms that I didn't know were mercury symptoms. Like I was tremoring. I was shaking. So that's I why had... they thought you had MS? Yes, that was part of it. Oh. Well, they thought I, because this root canal was presenting as trigeminal neuralgia, which is a nerve disease that comes off of the brain that's very serious. They call it the suicide disease, but typically it doesn't happen until you're in your 50s. But it was the opposite direction. So it was coming from the root canal infection, not from the brain. So that's why they thought it was MS, because you're a young woman, you're presenting with hyperreflexia, like tremor, yeah. um, and nerve, extreme nerve pain. So, yeah. But, anyways. That's like a whole other like direction to take this. I don't want to get off topic, but you know, breast implants in the body, they're kicking off like a whole bunch of problems. So epigenetic switches are flipping, the immune system's really burdened. So lots of things can go wrong and it can look really different from one person to the next. But in my case, those were some of the things that were happening. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk more about breast implants okay. and why <laughs> they can be so problematic. Before we do, you you mentioned something to me before we hit record. Uh, and I'd love to talk about this, the history of body modifications. Like why is it, and it's growing every single year. We see so many different things. We were just talking about that 
what is it the cheek thing that they oh the the buccal fat yeah, removal. yeah the buccal fat removal liposuction which we'll talk about yeah so let's get into the history like what are some of the things you've learned about the history of body modifications okay well so this is impo- the reason why it's important to talk about this is because so for years in fact when we did our podcast three years ago we were talking about breast implants and i said probably said that they were like the worst thing ever and that no one should ever get them and then i recommended everyone who had them to remove them and i don't really feel that way anymore you know it's been there's been a learning curve i've met a lot of people that are healthy with breast implants and i understand now why um i know why some people are healthy with breast implants and why others aren't and i and i have a very good understanding of how to intervene in those situations hey keto camper i want to interrupt the video real quick to share with you what i believe is one of the most important nutrients that we should be taking every single day. Most people are deficient in this nutrient and it's responsible for over 400 enzymatic activities in your body and your body just doesn't make it. So it's required to be taken in a high quality supplement or from high quality foods. The problem with the food is that our soil is depleted and it's hard to get this quality nutrient. So what is this nutrient? It's called magnesium, but I'm gonna share something with you very fascinating. Check this out. Upgraded Formulas has this incredible product called Upgraded Magnesium. And Barton Scott, the developer of this product and company, he's a brilliant guy. He created nanoparticle magnesium, which has the ability to penetrate your membranes and go right into your cells. There's a 99.99 percentage absorption rate. Now, this is unheard of because with other magnesium products, you better believe it's not that high. And there's an interesting study they're doing with Upgraded Mag. I want to share with you real quick. Early results from a sleep study with Dr. Sachin Patel showed that the average doctor in the group using this product has achieved an improvement of over 35% in deep sleep, more sleep studies, and a double-blind controlled placebo study with Upgraded Magnesium is coming sooner. And you better believe those results are going to be super exciting. We already know this. Upgraded Magnesium is easily the best supplement you can take for better sleep, including deep sleep, muscle aches, cramping, and any other signs of a magnesium deficiency, which is so common, unfortunately. What makes Upgraded Formulas unique, as I mentioned, is that it's a nanoparticle. This means it is absorbed very rapidly and efficiently by your blood cells. They produce a plasma-like version of minerals that the body recognizes and absorbs without digestion. And the results are phenomenal. I really believe just taking this for a couple of nights, you'll notice a big difference. So if you want to get Upgraded Formulas, Upgraded Mag, and any of their products. They also do some incredible hair mineral analysis tests to see your mineral imbalances and deficiencies, et cetera, and other incredible products that we've referenced before. Head over to upgradedformulas.com and use the coupon code KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. That is upgradedformulas.com. Coupon code is KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. I'm going to drop a link for you down below in the notes of this video. Okay, let's go back to this video. But I well, you're going to have to share that in a little bit. So we'll, we'll, in, we'll circle back to but that. But in any event, like it really comes down to the history of body modification. And when you study it and you see these crazy things that people did in different cultures, you just start to understand that, you know, it might not be something that you agree with or think is aesthetically pleasing, but for sure there's someone out there that does. And it's as humans, we we love to do this type of stuff. So what I think is important is just that we support people in whatever they want to do and we have options and you know if, if you want to do some kind of weird aesthetic thing that you think is attractive and whatever more power to you um you know i don't want to judge them but i think it should be safe or that they should at least know the risks and know how to support themselves right okay 100 percent. yeah so some weird examples well everyone knows about the the neck like the rings in africa right the extending the but neck explain right? it explain that well i i don't know that i'm not i can't go okay. in depth on each one but of we've seen things. you've seen Im- you've probably seen images of her yeah. Of it. yeah and then there's other things like there's this island um where they you would tattoo they believed that the that the behind the knee was a second vagina and it and so they would tattoo it and then they would do these hula dances where they would just slightly show it and men would go crazy and that was like a big thing they would show the behind the knee and yeah. the men would go crazy yeah exactly so whatever Talk about a, a, a new fetish so whatever was fetish. whatever was going on in their culture and their wiring that made them feel that way um, worked for them. So, right, to us now it seems ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you can look at Chinese foot binding and the way that s- signaled in their culture where you were 
with status, you know, if you were of the highest status, that meant that your foot as a woman was so bound that you could not walk, so you required a body servant. So if you were of the level to have a body servant, then you were you had reached like the epitome of success in that cultural time. So interesting. You know, we can judge BBL and buccal fat removal and breast implants, and you know, people judge me all the time for having lip injections, and you know, it's I get it. Some people get triggered, but it's just like, look at the history of body modification and, Yeah, you know, that's an interesting history. And, and you'll know right away because there's a lot of women in the explant community that are vehemently against breast implants. And when they see people thriving with breast implants, it really triggers them and upsets them. And they want everyone to know, you know, that this is not the right way. And I just, I don't personally feel that way. I don't, I don't have judgments about right or wrong anymore with this stuff. I just sort of want to support I respect that. So three years ago, you would have said everybody needs to get those implants out, and yeah. here's a protocol to do that. Here's yeah. how you explant. Yeah. Now you're saying there is a, a set of people. Uh, I would say the majority, but the majority but I do, can have breast implants and still be healthy. Is sorry, what you're saying. But, sorry to be dramatic, <laughs> but I do think that that's starting to change because of the way our society is becoming less healthy, and the way we're the the high exposure of to chemicals, and basically like as the histamine is going up, like the chances of being healthy with implants is going down right so if that was a graph and you know like you know about why so as people's stress buckets are increasing which histamine factors into that Absolutely. then it decreases the chances of them being healthy with breast implants yeah and like you see this on the outward presentation of like aesthetically because histamine has such a big relationship with collagen so as people start to have more skin laxity and look older and aging Um, you know, that's also on the inside of the body going to affect the type of scar tissue capsule that you can make around a breast implant, which is, which is basically the only barrier keeping your immune system from mobilizing microsilicone. And when, and we know that everyone who mobilizes microsilicone is sick. I mean, that's, I mean, that's studied because, I mean, there was recently a study of 300 women who were, they were, they all had breast implant illness and they were all explanting. But almost 100%, I mean, I think it was 98%, but almost all of them had silicone outside of the capsule. So that Hmm. tells you that everyone who's sick with implants has mobilized microsilicone to some extent, unless maybe like it's just a rare, like they have a very severe autoimmune reaction, which which probably also involves mobilization of microsilicone. But I could think of a scenario perhaps where it where it might not, but yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. So let's go, let's go back to the histamine thing. Okay. Well, you, you mentioned that um, increased amounts of histamine, uh, histamine, excuse me, destroys collagen production. Is yeah, that what you said? So absolutely. Could you explain? Because people think of histamine and they think, okay, high histamine foods, shell, shellfish, kombucha, uh, different things. But yeah. you know, talk about why exactly do people have high levels of histamine? How do you even test for that? Well, there's a difference between having like, like a react, like reacting to histamine from your diet and needing like a low histamine diet. There's a difference between that and there's a difference between, and, and maybe having primed mast cells in different parts of the body. Cause there's a lot of mast cells under the skin. There's mast cells in the GI tract. So people have different, and it's, I'm not demonizing histamine. Right. Histamine is amazing for neurotransmitter, you know, functioning. We need it. Uh, in fact, when people have high histamine, sometimes that's like what in part, leads to mania, which can drive a lot of neurological function, which sometimes people who are, have chronic illness need that to, to survive. They need that high level of thinking that histamine can drive. And especially in women when, you know, there's like a histamine estrogen, uh, like copper complex that can form. Yeah. But it, you know, it's like over time though, it can be very destructive as well. Um, so you wanted to know about you wanted to know about how this happens. So yeah. you have mast cells that work on a priming system, much like many other cells. Like we know about this with dopamine, with gambling. Like oh, I'm thinking about an activity that you know hypersecretes dopamine, and before I'm even doing the activity, I can feel the dopamine flowing. Right. right. So histamine's like the exact same way, and histamine works on triggers and. Um, hypersecreting histamine when the mast cells are really primed, it you know can look like reactional redness. It can look like different types of reactions, like whether it's um, you know more GI based or more skin based. And then over time, you know especially in the skin matrix, it's degrading type four collagen, mm. and that's going to lead to hypermobility. And it create. I mean, this is sort of why people who have genetic hypermobility, like elder Stanlow syndrome, they naturally just automatically skew into mast cell activation syndrome because like when the skin is stretching, the, it, that's priming the mast cells. So a hypermobile person will have 
will have more priming of mast cells um, and then therefore secrete more histamine, which then degrades more collagen and then it becomes a vicious cycle back and forth. But you can go the other way on the pathway where you can have hypermobility induced by excess histamine, which is induced by, let's say, low-grade circulating toxins chronically, low-grade low uh, allergen exposures. Um, infection can do it too because there's a lot of bugs that that break down collagen as well. So mm. they, and and if and if those bugs are present, they're going to also secrete secrete histamine secretion. So it all feeds out into each other. And that was a fast fast like explanation, but Yeah, no, it was a great so, explanation. Can you test for histamine? So if you want um yeah, you can. It's complicated. That's okay. not super like that's not really my expertise to Do you recommend though testing for it or is Well, that... I think uh do I recommend testing for it? That's I mean, sure. Okay. Yeah, if you're working with somebody who's like understands allergy really well and there, yeah, there's ways you can test for it. I would say if you want to learn more about this, research the MMP9 pathway. So that's the the group of metalloproteinases that's involved in. And so in my formula, basically all the nutrients in the formula help to support that pathway. And interesting, those are going to be things like quercetin and like go to cola and which the cent- Sentinella aseica. Was, there's many names for this particular herb plant and different like parts and extracts but it's used a lot in topical anti-reddening creams but when you take it internally it can dampen the mmp9 pathway and help support the integrity of mast cells it's something that silicone support formula does because it's really important in scar tissue uh, in collagen balance yeah silicone support formula which is your new product right yes. so talk a little bit more about why you selected those ingredients and who, who would use it. Is it just for somebody who has breast implants or some, can somebody else benefit from this product? Yeah. So I have a lot of people that take it that don't have breast implants, but that's because they have exposures to chemicals and like in the circles I travel and I'm always hanging out with people with chronic illness. So we're always, talk- <laughs> you know, like the things like that the formula does to support someone with breast implants could be really helpful for other people because it's basically like a really balanced daily multivitamin that supports the body over time. Um, uh, but yeah, it has three parts. One part is really focused on MMP9 pathway. I don't typically go into a big explanation of, of mast cell stabilization, but but yeah, well, we did it. So that was great. Mm-hmm. And you were following it, which I could tell, which is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. But most people just, you know, don't want to go there with it, but they they want to, you know, support the quality of collagen in their body. So that's what it does. And it does Everybody it. knows about collagen. That's yeah. For sure. And in fact, when we were writing the patent for this, I talked, my, my patent attorney has worked with other collagen products and he said, yeah, this is not like any other collagen product. It's not because it's not like giving raw materials for collagen. It's, I can't say the word preventing in relation to the formula, but how do I do this? This, But the process (laughs) is, is related to preventing the breakdown of collagen by deranging histamine. So we're like trying to work the pathway backwards. Um, okay. It also supports the immune system because autoimmunity is a big problem with anyone who puts a device in their body. It can it can be an issue and immune yeah. balance. So, um, in in the research, we know that people who who have autoimmune uh, presentation typically are deficient in substrates that recycle glutathione and and also fat soluble vitamins, and those are super important for fostering the T regulatory cell, which is the cell that decides uh, basically like if a tissue is like foreign or bad or not. So we support that pathway with glutathione substrates and fat soluble vitamins. And I also put a bunch of ingredients that help support the elimination of xenoestrogens. Oh, that's yeah. important. Yeah. You know, you know, s- speaking of which, and we'll go back to your product in a second. There was a study that came out that showed the average person eats enough plastic in a week to form a credit card. Oh my God, that's <laughs> terrible. Isn't that crazy? So having something like this is very, very important. So silicone support formula, it's not just for uh, women who have breast implants, but for women who do have breast implants, is this a must take for them? Or I would say that like if you're someone who has breast implants already and you have heard about the risk, like you're starting to hear from all these celebrities and, and influencers and women that are speaking out, and you're like not sure what to do. Maybe you want to remove your implants, but you're not, maybe you're not ready. Maybe you don't actually have symptoms, but you're just now, you know, you don't want to drink out of a bottle that has BPA plastic, but you, that then it's like in your body, right? So a lot of people yeah. are in this situation now and they don't really know what to do. Maybe they don't want to have a $15,000 surgery tomorrow. 
maybe one day they will. It's like this is something that you can take in the meantime that's going to help support your body. I think it's a brilliant idea because it's such, I mean, I, I've never been in that position you have, but I, I can imagine it's such a difficult decision to make. Right. Because not only is it going to cost you money, it's completely going to change your appearance. And yeah. y- you you uh, are pretty much admitting your decision to get them is, was wrong. And it's just a whole life shift. I mean, you went through it. Yeah. I mean, we can, that's, those are, you just, those are a lot of different issues like that you just named. Those are, those are all part of it. Yeah. Like that's why I wanted to make the formula something that could meet people where they are. And I understand the the reason why breast implants are horrible. I mean, I understand intimately from a biochemical process why that's happening. And, and, and so that's what the formula is working with. Like it's aiming to support those areas. And of course it can't prevent or treat illness because it's not a drug. So I have to be very like mindful how I talk about it. But of course, like if I had been taking this product prior to getting breast implants, because you can take it, if you're planning on getting them, you can take it beforehand. It's also really helpful. Like through the surgery process because because of the way it helps balance collagen there's going to be like the scar the job of closing the wound of the actual surgery so i do recommend it alongside surgery whether you're explanting or you're putting in new implants and then of course if you're explanting there's going to be microsilicone in the body and, there's, and that's going to create the same concerns over time like even after explant that you still want to support so i have women who take it that have explanted and it helps them um so yeah so fabulous so so i was i forgot what i was gonna say but i was gonna say something related to, to well i have a couple I ha- <laughs> yeah i have a couple things that we're gonna circle back to okay, Be- okay. before we do for those who are listening on the podcast you could get the silicone support uh formula is that what it's called silicone? yeah, yeah. Uh, ssf um <laughs> the link's down below and then yeah. we also have a coupon code yeah we're for gonna y'all. do a coupon code yeah. for your followers so it'll be keto camp you'll get a nice discount if you're watching on youtube same thing we'll put the link down below use keto camp at checkout again it's not just for women who have uh, breast implants but uh those who want to support the immune system or just want to deal with all the crazy nasty toxins that are out there in the world yeah and then we're gonna talk later about liposuction and how yeah, that can right. also be like a huge detox challenge so whether or not you have breast implants or not works if you have breast implants uh so so it's very useful in those situations too hey i want to just briefly interrupt the video you're watching to share something with you one of my favorite companies that I use for health and longevity and biohacking is a company called Bond Charge. And they have a whole range of incredible products, including the blue light blocking glasses you see me wear right now. But one of my favorite products from them is an infrared sauna blanket. That's right. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money investing in a sauna or spending so much time driving to a facility with the sauna. They actually created a sauna blanket that you could use in the comfort of your own home. And I use this all the time. Why would we want to even do a sauna? Well, there's a lot of research and a lot of studies showing the benefits of infrared sauna. The sauna blanket works by raising your heart rate to a workout or a training session. So you burn more calories while you're actually lying down and relaxing. You could burn up to 600 calories in one single session. Also, it's going to cause you to sweat. And one method of fleshing out toxins from your body is through sweat. There's also one of my favorite benefits, this endorphin release, endorphin rush you get from using a sauna blanket. And every time I get out of the sauna blanket, I feel like I just got a 60-minute massage. And uh, that's because of the endorphin benefit from it. So how this works differently than a regular sauna is that it works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than the air around you like a traditional sauna. This means you get the same benefit at a lower heat. So it's easy to set up. It's super convenient. 30 to 40 minutes uh, will suffice in terms of the length of the sessions. And you do that two to three times a week, you're going to feel amazing. Add that to your keto fasting protocol and watch what it does for your results. You could do it while you watch TV. You could do it while you read a book. I do it while I listen to an audio book. So if you want to learn more about the Bond Charge products, including the sauna blanket, head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp. And if you use the coupon code keto camp at checkout, you'll get 15% off your sauna blanket. And actually any of their products are 15% off with that code bond charge hooked you up so head over to that domain or click the link down below and go get your bond charge products all right let's get back to today's video i want to talk about the liposuction combination with the breast implants before we do but we'll get to that next you you said there's one reason why or there is maybe multiple reasons why women who could have breast implants but still 
be totally healthy. What, what is that reason? Yeah, absolutely. So that means that if their collagen system is working really mm. well, and I don't mean overworking because if that if it's overworking and it's dysregulated, that can become a capsular contracture, which is a really bad aesthetic outcome that if, you know surgeons are work, you know know all about. And that's when one breast will kind of like contract and lift and get hard. And, and that's also going to be fruit of the same poison tree of collagen derangement. The same concept as making poor capsule, like thin to thin capsule. Yeah. But anyways, if they have, if they're very healthy prior to getting breast implants and they don't have any of these issues that we've identified, then they'll probably make really good scar tissue capsule and they probably won't mobilize microsilicone and they will for the most part not be really negatively affected by the known toxins in the implants. Right. But those people I have seen get into trouble when they switch their set of implants if the surgeon does it without doing an on block capsulectomy because that in that situation. So imagine you're really young and healthy when you get breast implants and you make a really good capsule. It's balanced. It's walled off the implant. You're functioning. And then you go through life and you ha- and your bucket is filling. And then when you decide to switch your set of implants, maybe you're not the same health wise that you were when you initially made that first scar tissue capsule you've had other challenges maybe you had a baby like who knows right so many things could have happened and then the traditional way is like when they switch an implant set they're just going to cut into that capsule they pull the implant out they leave the capsule behind inside and it opens up in the pocket it's like pandora's box or whatever over the years it was holding in is now mobilized oh no and then they put a new implant in they just leave that capsule of collagen this is like the normal way that they do it. And then they just put the new implant in through the same little hole or incision rather. And yeah. then your body has to make a new capsule of collagen around the new implant. And, and then it also has the immune burden of the old capsule tissue, which is just sitting there, which like surgeons don't really acknowledge as an immune burden, but it's pretty obvious from a holistic perspective, right? Yeah. Like we know scars are a big issue, even like externally on the body. Like we procaine them. We do everything we can to get the meridian flowing because even just a scar randomly on your body can throw off your energy system. So now, you you know, you imagine you have like big scar chunks like inside your chest yeah wall. i mean common sense sounds it's, like it well from a holistic yeah. it's well, you know it's funny common sense how it works right it seems so obvious once it you does, know and yeah. yet it doesn't occur it's to like, you well, that doesn't sound right <laughs> well, it's like it sounds like that might be an issue well it's funny and i was talking to dr lee cowden in december i interviewed him about scars it's like a big topic for him and lymph, which he's like an expert in both. And that was how we put the together. I mean, I asked him some questions and he answered them, but I think that was the first time the two of us put together and he's not in the scene now that he's retired and he doesn't know about all the lipo that's going on. I think it's mm. a newer movement. So we're going to get to that. I'm excited because that was like a breakthrough for me. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know, those healthy people with breast implants need to be mindful when they switch their set. And maybe it'll be fine, but there's some there's a learning curve there that I would recommend. What are some ways they could uh, increase their collagen production? Increase that. Well, we don't want to increase. Well, we want to balance it, right? right? We, yeah, we you just, mentioned that. You don't want to really increase. You yeah, just want an optimal. Level. Yeah, we yeah. just want the we just want the collagen system to be functioning really well. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to support collagen. You know, obviously an an adequate protein diet, like absorption, like you know having getting all the amino acids that you need. Um, I think as we age. Uh, we t- our, as we age, the enzymatic machinery that that converts like raw essential amino acids into collagen, like it, you know, can get sluggish. So you can definitely supplement with I supplement with collagen, um, just because I want you know extra like proline and I want you know yeah. the hydroproline and I don't necessarily I take essential amino acids too, but you know I don't right I'm trying to make them easier on the body so it doesn't have to convert it, but. Those are, I also, for me, histamine's a big issue, so I'm, you know, always making sure I keep that mast cell stabilized, so I'm not breaking down collagen, like making sure that you don't have any chronic infection. That's a huge, huge component to collagen. So makes sense. Okay, got okay. it. So <laughs> the liposuction with a combination of of having breast implants, you had you did some research there, like you mentioned, yeah. and you had a, like a light bulb moment. Always. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, to share another personal story of just all the things I put myself through (laughs) and just myself being super interested in in body modification always. Like, I love the idea of transformation. I don't think for me it's necessarily coming from a dysmorphic, you know, insecure, like a little bit, like some just the normal woman stuff. But I really like love transformation. It's just something that I've always been fascinated by. So the idea that that there was proactive things I could do to learn and try – I'm a biohacker. I've always been this way my whole life. 
and before biohacking was a thing. <laughs> so I got really drawn into things. And when I was in my really early 20s, like 21, I t- did some liposuction. This was kind of a long time ago now. Like, we're not going to say, like, how old we are, but <laughs> it's kind of like a long, it's like 20 years ago now. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's very barbaric, old-fashioned liposuction. And I will say the techniques are a lot better now, but it still depends, right? There's a lot of user variability of the surgeon, right? Of course. So in my case, now understanding why I've had the major challenges I've had with detox has a lot to do with scar tissue, liposuction, mobilizing microsilicone, and then what we call the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, which is basically the abdominal lymph, which is really important because that's you know, sometimes um, limp, we have lymph everywhere in the body. And if you pull microsilicone off the implant and it's moving through its journey and it's trying to make it to the heart, to the cisterna chile, which then it gets dumped into the GI tract and then it gets processed by the liver gallbladder system and then it goes into the colon to leave. Mm-hmm. So that's the path that it's trying to take. But what happens is sometimes those white cells that are carrying, oh, your dog. Ziggy <laughs> yeah, yeah. wants to make an appearance in the podcast. We'll leave that in there. And Ziggy's triggering my allergies. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry so, no, it's that. great. It's appropriate. <laughs> We're Hor- talking about allergies. Hormesis. <laughs> well, I've been off my lysine, proline, valine peptide because I can't find anyone that makes it right now. And it's like, that's a drama. You want to take a break? Or no, no, okay? no. I'm just saying, typically I have this under control. I know how to fix it. But we can't control the supply chain, right? Yeah, that's I need, true. I need my own lab. <laughs> yeah. Not there yet. So anyway, <laughs> the next move. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to own a lab actually, but if some if one of our friends would make a lab, that'd be that's great. better. Or use systemic formulas. <laughs> well, they don't make peptides. Oh uh, yeah. I'm already a, using them. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I um yeah. There's only there's a few peptide labs, but no, we had to outsource that to China because it's a long story. Okay. Um, getting off topic. We'll yeah. Edit. The, lipo, the liposuction. <laughs> Okay, so as a white blood cell that has maybe pulled off some microsilicone from the breast implant or some scar tissue or whatever it's trying to eliminate, it's going on its path. And then when it gets to lymph nodes in the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, um, sometimes the white cell will die in the lymph node and it'll just deposit the silicone wherever it dies. And it doesn't really have like the enzymes to break it down. Like our body just can't, right? So it's trying to move out. Yep. Much like any foreign material like you talked about the microplastic it's got to be similar I haven't studied that at length but okay so that's happening so let's just say you have microsilicone kind of like gunking up the internal gall the the lymphoid tissue then imagine that you have scar tissue from liposuction laying so lymph can only like drain it doesn't have peristalsis like blood right and, and so it has, you know, that's, we have to move to move our lymph. We know that we have colleagues who show a lot of techniques for moving the lymph and getting it moving. Um, but imagine that you're, you know, let's say, okay, let's, let's do this water. I know. Okay. So I'm holding a water bottle and I'm just going to shake it and that's lymph moving. Right. But then imagine that there's scar tissue holding it and I can't even shake it. Ah, so yeah. I'm moving my body, but there's scar tissue that's holding that lymph in, in place. So what happens is there ends up being this really you know, severe traffic jam in the liver, in the gallbladder. And then you're trying everything else that you try to detox is going to be, is going to be challenged. Yeah. So these are people that are going to have a lot of symptoms when they try to detox. And it, and it's um, from my personal experience, this is just always in the cases. I'm so sick from something that other people can do okay with. And I'm the sensitive one and I'm not sensitive. Like I'm really strong and tough. Like I've done really tough things in my life and I know I'm not, but then I like fail at all this stuff and why. And then people, nobody understands because they, they say, yeah, detox is hard. Okay. But it's not, it's nothing like what someone's going to experience if they're in this situation. I'm telling you, I know this from personal experience. So no one is in your body, so they don't really know. But like you know, if you're beyond like what is normal for Herxheimer for mm-hmm. reactions, just regular detox symptoms. Yeah, yeah. like it, it, mild headache, diarrhea, or regular detox symptoms. Like even, and I remember like in 2020 when I was trying to do keto, and you were helping me, and I was like, "This is really bad." Like the keto flu, and 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 people, yeah, the keto flu is really bad. Okay, well, what I was experiencing was not really the keto. It flu. was related to the yeah, like the it trapped was, lymph. Exactly. And so, the bile was not being produced and you couldn't break down the fat and you couldn't detoxify. I was in a really bad situation and if I didn't, and I didn't know better, so I kind of tried to push it, but then I got to a point where I had to listen to my body and just abandon that course because it really wasn't the right thing for me at the time. I didn't know why. Now I understand why. Interesting. Yeah. 
So what did you do? What's the solution here? Well, okay, I can share some things I've done personally, but this is not medical advice, and I'm going to talk about pharmaceuticals, so it's yeah, definitely not medical this, advice. None of this is medical advice. But but something that's helped me personally with a congested gallbladder is there's a pharmaceutical product called Actigal, which is um, ursidyl, ur- 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 acid. I might be, I might have butchered that word, um, <laughs> it's okay. but it's basically bile, pharmaceutical, synthetic bile that thins your own bile. And that's been like a huge help for me. Yeah. Um, now, Dr. Cowden recommended, I believe like Tudka because it's not that different. I think they're really different, but if you want to be like using a More vitamin, holistic, yeah. mm-hmm. um, Tudka did not really like do it for me. It wasn't strong enough, but I think for some people it could be. And then basically getting for, for myself, getting my, getting to a place where I can tolerate liver flushes cause I can't, couldn't, haven't been able to, um, people have great success with liver, liver flushes and that a lot of holistic practitioners consider that to be the cornerstone of health is being able to like successfully do those flushes. Of course, they're criticized too, allopathically, very criticized. People say that the gallstones that come out aren't really gallstones. In any event, people experience great benefit from having that pathway working, having the gallbladder sure. working. So yeah. if that's challenged, you know, but there's more to it than that. There's, there's an even high, like an initial step which is stomach acid because stomach acid production is what stimulates the gallbladder in the first place. And pretty much all low in stomach acid, right? Because of the, the crop depletion in the, in the soil. Especially, this is going to be controversial, especially those of you drinking alkaline water every single day. The Kangen, <laughs> yeah. the Kangen folks don't hate me, but stop doing it. Yeah, well, or at least like avoid that with meals um, or around meals because you don't. Good tip. Totally. Yeah. Like we, we, already, we already are having stomach acid challenges. And then in, in this population of people that have complex chronic illness or a breast implant illness, like, you know, then they have low stomach acid. And that's usually why these infections and the gut dysbiosis is because, you know, you're having to sterilize the food with the stomach acids if you're not doing that process. But also the bile helps to sterilize the bugs. Yeah. Um, so, so I think HCL interventions can be really beneficial. And slowing down, chewing your food, getting parasympathetic. Uh, yeah, all that. Of stuff. course. And then and then, you know, like a mineral replenishment regimen, because that's part of the problem of why the mitochondria and the stomach are so depleted anyway. And I have had success with synthetic bile. There's and then working that process up to liver flushes to be I mean, all of this is really important before you start thinking about detoxing metals, um, silicone. Also, if you are one of these liposuction you know, people, whether you have microsilicone in your body or not, um, you have to do rigorous scar ther- manual therapies to unburden yourself of scarring in the areas where you had liposuction and then follow that with, with um, therapies to just constantly keep the lymph moving with the understanding you may not ever be able to get all the scar tissue out of that area. But there's a lot of scar interventions, lots of things for yeah. scars, whether it's like the TRT machine, which is the yeah. modified ultrasound. I've done that almost all over. I've done that everywhere on my body pretty much. I <laughs> That's painful. Think, no, it's, <laughs> I love it. Really? Yeah. It's painful? Where well, I mean, it depends on where you do it. When I was having lower back pain and they were doing it in my lower back, it was super painful. But you know their motto, if you feel it, you heal it, right? It's, yeah. Well, it, it, it hurts a little bit, like the first couple pulses, and then it usually numbs the area. And then when you have a big area of scar tissue and it hits that, the residents can cause a little bit of pain. But they probably just could have lowered it. It doesn't have to hurt. Well, well, it was Dr. John Laurent. Oh, yeah. He's, he's he was, a mad he's, wizard. He's very, like, aggressive, maybe. <laughs> he's yeah. A, he's a wizard. Yeah, I remember when we took his spray, and uh, I, I was sick for, like, 30 uh, minutes. I you had know, to- I've learned a lot from that spray. I, like, I don't let people do it anymore. I'm like, I can do it. My fiance could do it. But I, I noticed, like, you're not the only one. It yeah. happened so many times. No, but I love it. Like, I'm not bad mouthing it, but I took too much. And I, the reason I took too much was because I had tried it before and loved it, which was probably the right dose. But I think it was um, a higher um, concentration. concentration. It was. It was. The VIP one. So right, right, right. I've learned that people need to start <laughs> stay slow. <laughs> that was at the Bulletproof conference, yeah, right? At yeah, Dave's and we're talking about oxytocin spray of case everyone, right? Yeah. Or like shamanic well, it, stuff. It, it, so it has oxytocin, it has nicotine, it also has mm-hmm. um, a hape, right? Yeah. The Amazon essential oil. So yeah. I love the product yeah. too. I use it cyclically, but I've seen so <laughs> many people 
like I have some crazy stories like where they take it and it's like they don't have a good outcome. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah just stay away, you know, yeah. <laughs> get yeah. the lightest version, start there. Yeah, exactly. And so sometimes just going low is okay. Yeah, like, exactly. With everything. <laughs> Mine is super strong, right? So that's the one you did. So it's called, uh, it's called Zen, right? Yeah. Uh, Mito Zen. Yeah. And I love the product, but like I, I stopped like giving it to people just right. because I kept seeing that theme. <laughs> right. And, and mine is too strong for like somebody to start out with. So you did it and then what you got, like, you just felt like. I think like the room was spinning for 30 <laughs> yeah. minutes. Like I sat down by one of those other energy machines and I was just like, please let this help I me. I remember. It just was, I had to wait it out. Uh -huh, it was bad. But yeah. I got through it. Like everything. Yeah, you got through it. You've been through a lot. Okay, so. The goal is to uh, work on the stomach acid, take some HCL potentially. You took synthetic, uh, synthetic bile. Mm -hmm. Maybe even ox bile could help. Yeah. And then work your way up to like a liver flush, gallbladder flush. Yeah, and then make sure you coffee can do – Coffee enema. So like if you can so – so people who have this problem, when they do coffee enemas, they don't get any gallbladder contraction. And so it's kind of like a sign. Like coffee enema is not doing anything for you. Like you need something more aggressive. We're not talking about a normal body. We're talking about a body that's been inundated with – like man-made pharmaceutical materials from like industrial materials, right? Yeah, right? And and so it's kind of, you know, Dr. Cowden created a really brilliant system that some of his colleagues are still carrying on, but it, this is how he helped women in the 90s that had microsilicone. In the 90s, the implants would break apart really easily. So they it was like big chunks of silicone. So we're not talking about little micros. We're talking about like macro so, so they would get like instantly sick well they were having a lot sick. of problems yeah pain syndromes neuropathies autoimmune diseases none of that was really ever fleshed out because all they had to prove was that the devices weren't operating as intended and then that was enough to get the fda to pull them from the market but yeah there was a lot of health problems but so he had he invented so these because he's such a you know savant of medicine and the body right he's a holistic medical doctor and he cardiologist and he people were coming to him and so he had to think critically about what to do so what he did was he invented a system that's sort of like like a colonic except that they invert the body and they do this special type of massage so that right where the lymph is about to dump into the cisterna chile they press it and it bypasses that so instead of going to the heart liver gallbladder it goes right into the colon I don't know how he figured this out. Interesting. But they literally saw silicone coming out in the toilet, and it's this retreat Jeez. that he created, and it's really kind of complicated. And I think that there's, there's, they're going to maybe do more of them. But in lieu of that, I just keeping that pathway moving isn't really important. Besides somebody who had liposuction, what else can what what else can cause this as well? What else can cause what? Um, the blockage, right, with the lymph right there. You mentioned there was scar tissue from the liposuction blocking the lymph, and then it's affecting your liver gallbladder. What else, like besides liposuction, can cause that? Well, I think just the presence of microsilicone in that area with or without liposuction is a problem. And, like, everybody has lymph and can benefit from lymph modalities and keeping those things moving. For sure. But it's like, you know, it's the reason why sedentary lifestyle is so, you know. Yeah, it's really one of the many reasons why, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, you, yeah, but, well, it, I mean, but they might, all those reasons might lead to lymph at then, right? Cause that's where everything goes. Right. I don't know. I mean, yeah, for sure. I agree yeah. with you, but yeah. also like you're not stressing your body. Your body's mm -hmm. not adapting to the to stress. Yeah. That's true. It's I good. didn't think about that. Yeah. But yeah. A hundred percent. There's totally. no stress. It's just like you're easy to kill. That's to not good. Totally. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah, of course. So, so. Um, I do think another intervention that we haven't talked about is ozone. I think that that, for this type of patient, it, whether it's really mild administration of ozone at home with your own machine and you're doing some sort of insufflation or you're doing EBU, which yeah. is expensive and invasive and intense, but those are, they all are great. Yeah. And you went to Dr. Yoshi Ram. Mm -hmm. I've had him on my podcast. We mm -hmm. talked all about methylene blue. So oh yeah. I have methylene blue in my water bottle that I left in oh, the car. Sweet. But yeah, I love methylene blue. I take, you know. Which, but, which one do you take? Um, one that I, like a really cheap one from Amazon from a lab that's like not even for human Is use. It, it's oral? Uh -huh. <laughs> but it makes your mouth all blue, no? No, because I dilute it in water. I just take a oh, tiny drop. Oh, just swallow it? Mm -hmm. I use the one from uh, Dr. John. He has um, a suppository. Oh, wow. So that one, I don't have to worry about it. Where do you supposit it? <laughs> <laughs> Up your butt. <laughs> okay, because I've seen the oral trochies, which you, make your mouth I've blue. used those, but my mouth turns completely blue, and that's not good for a content creator. So I've emailed them. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what can I do to get this out of my mouth? Or like uh, try brushing, try, and nothing works. So I don't, oh, wow. I don't use it because of that. But the 
sup- suppository, you know. Okay, you, I like that. Or you could even cut up the suppository and just swallow it and you still don't – but you're going to pee. It does cause stomach irritation. Though. It can, yeah. depending on how much you take. And then, yeah. you're, of course, you're going to pee blue and then poop blue and all that good so, stuff. So, like, for anyone li- listening, you know, we're just basically talking about – I guess, mitochondrial interventions, like NAD interventions, which I think are really useful. And I'm a big fan of NMN too. NMN um, works great for my body, but I think there's different like forms of the molecule and like, you know, supporting methylation at the same time. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, methylene blue is like fuel for the mitochondria, right? And it's been around for such a very long time. And then NMN and NAD, Dr. Sinclair kind of made it really popular, but it's, it's, you know, in supplement form. There's also some skincare products that have it like Young Goose. Yeah. Yeah. And then also I learned from Dr. Yoshi, another reason why we like, uh, we like uh, methylene blue is related to like oxygen, like carbon monoxide carrying like on red blood, red blood cells. So it, when people have pathogenic infections, like, like fungus or any, basically any GI dysbiosis combined with leaky gut, that stuff is going to be in the blood. So what happens is it competes with like, like they produce carbon monoxide gas and that competes with oxygen hmm. for RBC binding. So methylene blue is actually used in the hospital to treat carbon monoxide poisoning um, because it can bind to the red blood cells for a really long time. So then you like you could test your O2 saturation and it's really not testing O2 saturation. It's testing saturation. So it could be carbon monoxide or oxygen. And then you feel like you have low blood flow like symptoms or poor circulation symptoms. But it's like, why? you know, so methylene blue can help to like knock the carbon monoxide off. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they are going to use it for those folks in um, East Palestine, Ohio. Yeah, maybe. I don't know that much about the situation. It's a little bit of a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about like a chemical shitstorm really. Um, Okay. This has been this has been really good. <laughs> Did Is we it, cover yeah. everything on your list? There's one la- w- there there's one last thing on my list. So we're we're talking about supplements here, and I have a favorite. You know my favorite supplement, okay? It's vitamin, vitamin G. G. <laughs> vitamin G, right? So gratitude, as you know. So what are you deeply grateful for? To, uh, what are you gr- deeply grateful for today? What's your vitamin G dose? So. It just, you know, like I'm in Miami spending time with my family. That's something that's close to my heart. And like being able to, like you're my first affiliate. So I'm trying to learn e-commerce. Silicon Support Formula is a small business. And my, my you know, expertise is in formulation. And that was all, you know, last year. It was awesome. And now we're in like the selling part of it, which is, to be honest, just very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I, I'm, but I, of course, want to sell it, but it's, you know, a word of mouth thing right now. Like we're not even doing marketing. So you're my very first affiliate. And awesome. that we're literally honored. means the world to me because you're like a pillar of spreading gratitude. Like every time I hear you talk, it moves me like almost to tears because you're so good at tapping into like those vibrations that, and I can feel it. But I don't know if it's because we're both Florida people, or, <laughs> <laughs> but I really feel it. Like it moves me and like, that's, I need like more of that. Like we all need more of that. So. Amen. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate that. I'm going to cry now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so appreciative and like we're the first affiliate. So if you want to yeah. check out the product, I mean, if you think it's, if you have breast implants for sure, but if you think it'll be a good fit, you can learn more about it by going to the link down below and then using keto camp at checkout. It's called silicone support formula. Where else can they go? Website, social media to check you out. Yeah, just at Dr. Kate. That's K A Y T E, by the way. D R K A Y T E. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and yeah, so look, yeah, right now we're a startup, so it's really word of mouth. If you or someone you know has breast implants, you know, share this with them. I think that it, it can really help. And right now it's the only product in the world that supports this issue that Super very few cool. people understand. So. so important. And what's the social media you want them to go to? Just mine. Yeah, there's at Dr. Kate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's on Instagram. We'll put it all down below. But for sure, if you know somebody who has a breast implants or they've explanted, either mm-hmm. way, send this episode to them. So mm-hmm. if you're watching on YouTube, just copy and paste the link, put it into like a text message. If you're listening on the podcast, same thing, like spread the word. And uh, we'll do a round three sometime in the future. Okay, I'm excited. Kate? Yeah, thank you so much for Thank coming you back so to much. the show. Great thank job. You. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>